Hi, Mark. Hi, John. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Chilling Framework today. So uh, together with me, uh, we have uh, Simone. Okay. Right. I call him yeah. uh, Sim1. So look at his name. It's <laughs> S-I-M-O-N-E. Sim1. So I got the pronunciation. <laughs> It's so, correct. It's correct. Be, be serious, okay? We are doing live stream right now, so don't laugh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this is me. All right. Uh, all these years, uh, I've been calling myself uh, uh, X Wings. Everybody knows me as uh, X Wings. So, uh, I I work for this company, uh, JD dot com, uh, in the uh, security department, and uh, I design quite a fair bit of batch for. Mostly hack in the box, and actually only hack in the box, and nobody else. So this year is the lockdown edition, so we don't have any patch available for anyone. I mean, I can do one for myself, but that is not fun. Uh, since uh, last year, I've been working for uh, Chilling Framework, and this is a thing that we're gonna talk uh today. So uh, this is pretty much uh about myself and the rest of the team that will be uh so uh what do we have over here? It's uh these are a few of the uh teams that we have uh and uh we have uh of course the uh most of the work is from the uh, community, okay and the uh, the oh I I am the mastermind but we have the uh big evil advisor that is uh Queen the one that built. Unicorn engine, the one that built uh capstone, the the one that built uh keystone. All right, I know for sure he's listening right now, and he it's the control freak. I just want to put my complaint right over here since he's listening right now. So that is a uh, queen that builds a unicorn engine. We call him the professor within uh our group. Okay, so uh, what what do we have here? It's uh we're gonna talk about the agenda. So. I, I know you guys saw the star us thingy, but uh yes, the agenda is pretty much about the uh, the motivation why we want to build a chilling framework, okay, and uh all the way until the uh, conclusion. So right before we go on, okay, please uh uh like our project, you know, give us a little bit more star. We are suffering, we are hungry, and we are feeding on GitHub star. So please do us a very small favor. Quinn just sent me a message and says, oh, what the fuck? So, all right, he heard us. Okay. So, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, we're going to talk about a bit on a uh, unicorn uh, emulation framework. So what we have over here, it's a uh, unicorn is actually a CPU emulator. And uh, this is the base of our entire project. Okay. So, uh, but the only limitation here, it's, uh, he Unicorn cannot handle any files. So if you look at the screen uh, next to me, you know, the little bra black screen over here, they can only emulate what we call it as a CPU code. So you put in an address, you put in your uh, register, and then you put in all necessary information like how much RAM you want to have and uh, what kind of condition you want to execute a code, and it will execute this, the, the opcode according to your settings. So that is... Uh, that is a unicorn engine. But if we need to bring these uh, features into next level, that is quite a fair bit of job uh, we wanted to do. Okay. So how how we actually got this uh, project uh, started? All right. So uh, this is a very fun uh, story for us to uh, to share. So uh, how we actually get into this entire project? It's uh, we started with uh, shell code, right? Rather what I mentioned just now. So I I have been uh throughout all these years uh uh in 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 corporate, I have been uh receiving quite a fair bit of uh funny binary codes from the uh security monitoring teams. So and then I have this uh, idea: why not we should build something? Why not we should build something to uh to analyze the shell code? So I mean. Me, me and, uh, the founder of Unicorn Queen has been friends for so long. So we always, I, I, I always wanted to build a, a fairly large and uh, a nice project with, uh, Unicorn. So I was like, we, we, we should have a shellcode framework or, or a tools to execute our shellcode. So this is how we, we all got started. So, uh, how to translate a bunch of, uh, how to translate a bunch of, uh, opcode into a human readable format or, or a more informative uh, report. That is what 
I wanted to achieve, and it should be automatic, and it should be uh uh as easy as uh you know we we can run it just just like that. So. So and why we wanted to analyze such shellcode? The only reason is a shellcode gets more complex from day to day. So we are looking at uh you know uh a very simple shellcode that which is on my left. Okay, you can see uh no, your left, my left. You know we can see a very short shellcode and until a very complicated shellcode. The only reason is uh shellcode gets complicated because of uh it the environment gets more complicated. Windows get more complicated, antivirus get more complicated, okay, network detection tools uh, get more com complicated, IDS firewalls uh, get more complicated, they can do more things. So shell could design to evade all these kind of uh, detection, that is where uh, to analyze shell code is a very important task. Uh, of course, uh, lazy people like me, before we are always, uh, I mean, when, when they always uh, wanted to start a new project, we were not start a new project we, we will we will go out and hunt we will go out and hunt for a project so uh what we are trying to do over here is uh, we, we discovered this uh, project called user card all right uh very very good uh project but the only thing over here it's uh limited to uh, os supports i mean we know that uh, when we receive shell codes it must be i mean for 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 corporate uh security purposes we need to have something on uh Windows and not only Linux. The bad thing is, a uh, user con only runs on uh, on on a Linux platform. It only emulates a uh, Linux platform. So that it's not exactly what we wanted to uh what what we wanted to uh, to use. Okay, and uh, like I always say, uh, go go lang. It's not really a hackers friendly language. Uh. It's a very good language, okay. I'm not condemning this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, Golang, but it, it's, when, when there's a CDF player, when there's a hacker, everybody goes to, we were no Python and not everybody knows a uh, Golang. So that is one of the reasons we were thinking we should rebuild this entire, uh, project. All right. So what is required over here? It's, uh, we always want a good debugger. We always want one one a uh, uh, a good disassembler that is something that uh, we really need, all right. And uh, it always goes to a second level where how many OS we want to support. Do we want to support the BSD series? Do we want to support the Linux series? Do we want to support uh the Mac OS series? So when I say the Mac OS is including iOS and the latest and the famous uh, iPad OS, all right. And of course the last one is uh we must support Windows. So when we uh try to 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 design this entire framework, we were thinking that uh you know we must have a good debugger, we must have a good uh disassembler, of course uh, the OS choices and what kind of uh what what kind of uh, architecture that we need to focus on. So we are looking at mates, we are looking at ARM, we are looking at uh what are you doing, brother? We are looking at MIPS, we are looking at ARM, we are looking at Arch, uh, ARM64 and x86, of course, 62-bit and 32-bit. So, if, if, if we move on, alright, uh, then, uh, they, they, there will be, uh, uh, there will be, uh, the next question is, uh, why, why Unicorn and not the uh, other emulators? So, uh, we look at, uh, we, we do look at other emulators, uh, 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 when we compare to uh, uh unicorns, we are looking. We we look at VMware. We look at uh, uh especially uh, things like uh, uh VirtualBox, QEMU. All right, which is uh, more flexible for us to customize. And the only issue over here that we have is uh, all these virtualized platforms are over emulate. When I say over emulate, we are looking at things that they are emulating. The display drivers, they are emulating the sound cards, they are emulating all sorts of things that uh, we don't even need. What we really need is a CPU emulator. So Unicorn Engine is still our 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 our, our main choice to to do uh to do to, to build this uh, platform. Of of course, uh, the next thing that uh you might know is uh the more things you emulate as a uh, 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 emulation engine. There's a higher chances for the malware to detect your 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 sandbox. So that uh, or or whatever thing there is. So that is the 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 concern. Uh, 
that we have. So when, when we move on to this stage, then now we, we realize that, okay, we need to have a emulation system, which is as simple as possible. That is the reason why we go with a, a unicorn engine. All right. So like I mentioned just now, so if I need to build a hackable shellcode emulator or a framework, so these are the things that uh, we need to go for. Okay. Uh, we need to have a lot of uh, OS uh, support. Okay. We need to have a very good uh, assembler. All right. So, and uh, the assembler must support a different architecture. That That is for sure. Okay. And uh, we need a, a good uh, disassembler. So, how can we mix and match uh, all these uh, things together? So, this is one of the things that uh, we really, really uh, took into uh, consideration. I mean, uh, of course, uh, to choose, you know, BSD, choose uh, uh, which Linux to support, and then uh, how we can build all our web support, that is something that uh, uh, we really spend a lot of time on. So, after that, uh, we started with a project last year around around this time, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So it's around uh, uh, April. We did uh, announce uh, our first version of uh, 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 Killing. So during that time, is, we, we call it uh, GUA. It's a combination of uh, we are using Unicorn Engine, Capstone Engine, Keystone Engine. And then uh, we have a very minimum support of... Uh, of uh, uh, we have a minimum support of our FreeBSD, um, uh, uh, Linux, uh, Windows, uh, Apple, and then until the end of the day, we go with, uh, you know, Python is our chosen language. So, until this stage, until this stage, uh, we thought that, hey, we got our first uh, uh, project. So, this is how it looks like uh, during that time. So this is how it looks like uh, during that time. So, we have a, 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 a bunch of... Uh, Linux uh, ARM64 TCP reverse uh, shellcode. So uh, if you try to execute, all right, you just need to uh, call the tools and then uh, shellcode and then uh, put in your the, the arch and the OS and what type of file that you're gonna throw in and it will execute. So you can see it translate from the opcode all the way to a readable uh, report or, or or readable format. Okay, human readable format. So this is how simple we can execute. A piece of a uh, shell code. All right. So instead of throwing a uh, hex, we can actually put in a bunch of uh, assembly code. So if you intend, if you intend to uh, develop a shell code and then uh, you have your assembly code, we can compile on the fly by using Keystone, of course, and then uh, to disassemble it by 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 using a Unicorn engine and then uh, to show you the uh, uh Capstone engine and then uh, to execute it using a uh, Unicorn engine in the back end to show you the uh, end result. So that is pretty much uh, how we uh, run uh, x86 32 bits uh, assembly file. And then uh, we can even execute a uh, Windows, of course. So a Windows, uh, as a, uh, a Windows assembly file, we try to run it so you can see the assembly uh, file down there as, as an example. And then uh, we have uh, how we can execute a uh, Windows uh, code. So this is as simple as uh, that. We, we even load in the uh, DLL. So this is a very fun uh, project for us. But until this stage, okay, right before we announce, until this stage, the only, the only thing that we thought is uh, we can execute, we, we spend a lot of time to build a, a Windows uh, DLL loader, uh, all the different kind of Cisco for Windows, uh, for, for Linux, for Mac, uh, different Cisco for, for, for free BSD. So we thought, uh, if we put a little bit more extra effort, we might able to run file. So that is what we, uh, thought originally. So, and from my imagination, I always thought, uh, it can be a two weeks job, you know, since we have uh, almost everything ready. So we just need to build a file parser. Okay. Uh, 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 a kind of a uh, file parser, then uh, we should be able to run a proper exe file, uh, a proper uh, Linux binary or or, or 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 a Mac O binary. So that is my childish and fortunate imagination. So once we finish uh, this project, so we were, we were like, uh, ah, let's go on with a more ambitious uh, thing, you know. But again, during that time. It wasn't too, 
total ambitious for us. So this is the actual project. And uh the the the, the features that uh, we put in uh, after all these months, ever since the first beta release in uh, uh first beta release uh last year, November and uh right until now, we can support uh Windows, we can support uh Mac OS, we can support Linux and uh, we can support uh BSD. So again, when I mentioned a uh, Mac OS, it does include certain parts of our uh, iOS, which we are still developing. It support cross architecture, x86, 32-bit, 64-bit, um, um, 64, MIPS. Okay. And then uh, we have, uh, uh, we, okay, of course, uh, in order to run an exe file, Mac O and uh, Elf, we must support a, uh, a different uh, file format. And we do have a different level of uh, uh, API setup, and then uh, you know it, you can turn it into uh, a sandbox, okay? And uh, since uh, last uh, February, we throw in a remote uh, debugger, so it can, you can fully support a GDB IDA, and then uh, we just discovered that you can actually run R2 on it, and uh, uh, Mr. Sim one, okay, he actually built in a very fun features so we can uh, we can do uh, OS profiling so I, I I'm going to show you how uh, OS uh, profiling works uh, later in the demo this is one of the important features that uh, you know we we always wanted to have and uh, finally we, we have it with his uh, help okay uh, of course from uh, from day one we started to build this entire framework everything is on uh, Python so it's very easy for Feel kind of a uh, uh, human beings, you know. I mean, not limited to human beings, but anyway, any kind of uh, people who wanted to uh, to uh, learn different kind of a uh, project. Okay, number one is uh, if you wanted to learn how to build an OS, not from scratch, you can always uh, look at uh, our project <clears throat> and then uh, write more Syscall or write more uh, Windows API on top of it. So this is one of the best way for you to learn. Uh, how OS uh, work. I mean, okay, so if you are, if you want to go for CTF, of course, this is a perfect tool. If you want to build an analysis platform, you know, for IoT, for, 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 for Windows, this again will be another great tool uh, to be your foundation on top of the tools that you want to build. All right. So until this stage, okay, until this stage, uh, the questions that uh, I always receive is, uh, People asking, you know, so how do you compare yourself with all the existing projects out there? So we collected some of the projects that we know. I mean, some of that we, if, if, uh, the project exists and we doesn't know, then, uh, too bad, you know, it's not on this list, but, uh, all the way from a uh, QEMU user mode to, to user con to, to Bini, the top three projects on the, okay, the, 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 uh, QEM user mode is a tools for sure. You only can run a file and it's only a file. And they are doing a syscall forwarding. I put it in read. I will explain why later. Okay. And then a user con, uh, I did mention just now, very limited OS port. Okay. And, uh, it's doing a syscall forwarding. All right. Uh, last year we discovered that this uh, wonderful project called, called Bini. It only runs a uh, Windows. It doesn't support Linux. Okay. And it's just a tools. So a tools means, uh, you can't download you can compile and you can just run a exe file without providing a you know ad additional plugin or, or api or whatever things from the thing so uh and then we have wind why only support windows that runs on a non windows platform you know namely linux all right microsoft have this thing called wsl2 okay i'm not too sure whether we should put it in this category or not but uh i'm quite sure somebody will ask uh, you know how do you compare yourself with uh, wsl2 uh, WSL2 is not sandbox. Everybody knows that. All right. Uh, there's no instrumentation. In fact, uh, QEMU user mode, you don't have, uh, instrumentation. Uh, why you don't have instrumentation? All right. Bini, you don't have instrumentation. And then, uh, I think last month or last two months, uh, we discovered this uh, project called, uh, Zilos. All right. Uh, they only support uh, Linux base, uh, no Windows yet. And then, uh, their multi architecture support is not complete. Okay. But they are using Python and, and it's a framework. So the nearest project that, uh, 
I mean, what one of the good projects they have we have seen in the uh, market, uh, you know, nowadays. So, <clears throat> uh, I did rate and bold Cisco forwarding just now. So why is this call forwarding in QEMU and uh, why is this call forwarding in other emulation platform is not healthy. It's just because of uh, you can only forward syscall within the OS itself. So I give you an example over here. If I wanted to use a QEMU to run free BSD. Okay, so this is a scenario. I need to use a QEMU user mode to run a free BSD uh, your FL just to find out uh, how does this thing work. The only way for me to do it is uh, I need to install FreeBSD and install QEMU, then only I can emulate FreeBSD. I cannot emulate a Linux ELF file within a QEMU that installed on a FreeBSD. So you only can emulate the same OS on your, on the targeted OS that you want to emulate. So that is syscall forwarding so we we when we design uh, this uh, entire project we wanted to avoid this so it will take us extra effort to uh to rewrite the syscall in a uh, in a uh, python but we will have a more proper support uh when it comes to a cross platform and across uh, architecture so how, how does killing work is uh very simple all right so when i mentioned about the cross platform and cross architecture which means uh, we can run on windows we can run on linux we can run on bsd we can run on uh, uh mac os and we can emulate mac os we can emulate uh, uh all the POSIX system we can emulate the uh, windows so there is no limitation on uh, which os that you choose and uh, which os uh uh, we can emulate, all right. So of course, uh, you can uh, run on an ARM64 machine to emulate the x86 uh, machine. So this is uh, what uh, we normally do on the uh, on the uh, demo. So I bring my 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 Android pad along, and uh, we will demonstrate uh, how killing uh, works. Okay, and uh, we can take in uh, ELF. <clears throat> we can take in a uh, P file. We can take in a P32, uh, uh, Maco. And, uh, of course, uh, we have this, uh, loader and, uh, to set up the uh, OS environment. And then, uh, to execute it. Okay. And then, uh, that is where you decide, uh, whether you want to throw in an instrumentation or not. So instrumentation simply means you can redirect the process to your interpretation before it returns to the software and exit. So this is how you can inject code. All right. This is how you can uh, fast the uh, software. This is how you can, uh, you can understand you, you can do more analyze when it comes to, uh, authentication or whatever thing there is. So this is what you need when it comes to, to be a, 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 a platform or to be a framework or to be a, a very strong analysis tool. So we have our instrumentation built in and uh like what i mentioned just now all right once we finish the first part of the project all right uh i am too naive to think that uh, we it's very easy for us to uh, build a file execution system instead of a shell code so mm. uh the first thing first is uh we need to fix the loader issue shell code it's not a file shell code is not a file so we don't need to pass in a way to pass the file to set up the environment uh, we need to set up the environment for shell code but when the file comes in we need to uh, sort of read the file to understand the file to load up the file before we can execute the file so this is uh, the this is a uh, question number one we cannot find a suitable loader out there and then uh, most of the the software that we discovered is actually parser so the differences between a parser and loader is loader will tear down everything, put it together and let the CPU execute. Parser is just to understand the file. So parser don't really uh, fulfill our requirements. So we need to build a ERF loader. Uh, we need to build a PE loader. We need to build a, a Mac loader from uh, scratch. Okay. PE loader. Yes, we do borrowed libraries from here and there. 
and uh, for Maco and uh, uh, from a ELF loader, we need to build it from scratch. Uh, of course, uh, followed by uh, all the uh, syscall emulator. So whichever ELF binary that we test against, we need to fulfill the uh, syscall. So we started with one, two, and then uh, now I think easily we got 120 or 136 calls uh, ready. Okay, so uh, we call it the post six uh, series. It's just because uh, there are quite a fair bit of syscall can be shared between uh, Mac OS, Linux, or the BSD series, right? So uh, uh, for Linux, it's uh, quite easy. I mean, we have shell codes, we have uh, uh, we, we we have source code, we have uh, information. So uh, so we just need to understand a bit more on the kernel, then uh, we can emulate the syscall. Okay. Uh, we are still looking for option that uh, you know, we might be able to skip or forward the uh, the uh, syscall, and then uh, <clears throat> how can we prepare execution server report? So that is part of the uh, syscall implementation that uh, you know, we have been doing. So uh, as you can see, there are some parts of the syscall we actually uh, emulate quite nicely. All right, and there are some parts, especially the Ampro tag. It's not really important in our scenario, so we just return a zero and tell the the CPU, you know, we are we are set to go. So if the CPU asks us to protect a certain memory, and we just tell the CPU we actually protected, and we are not going to protect any memory that the CPU asks. So and then uh, in Windows, uh, we got a more complicated game over here. So in Windows, uh. We need to set up TEB. We need to set up uh, uh TEB, and then uh you know we have this uh, LDR data structures, and then uh, we need to set up the uh, MSR. So bit by bit, we need to set up uh on hand. All right, there are some codes over here which is kind of uh, outdated. All right, hopefully Quinn don't see it. <clears throat> and uh uh in windows uh then we need to build the uh, in memory uh module list you know to 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 in initialize uh, all the list these are all the things that uh we have uh, input information uh, here and bit uh, uh here here and there a little bit but most of the information it's we need to go through some sort of uh uh reverse engineering by by via IDA Pro or whatever debuggers that uh we think is appropriate to get the information uh that we need. <clears throat> so uh we talk about the uh Linux part, we talk about the uh the uh the POSIX part, we talk about the uh Windows part and uh we talk about the uh CPU adventure. So uh once we are uh, sort of uh, have the very basic version of the uh, loader uh we discovered that uh we need to set up quite a fair bit of uh, information on the uh <clears throat> on the uh, cpu so uh uh they are a cpu so it should be os3 but in there in, in certain situations certain os required a different setup so you are looking at x86 uh, 3264 bit you know you're looking at x86 uh uh, 32 bits uh GDT and then uh x 64 bit you need to set up the uh uh MSR record so it's a little bit different from uh, OS to OS but generally it's still the same so uh that is how we uh, need to uh, dig out the information and apparently it's not too hard there are quite a fair bit of uh, uh GDT information especially to set up inside Unicorn okay available out there so just need to do a bit of a uh, breathing. And uh, when it comes to uh, ARM or ARM64 series, um, there is a way uh, we need to uh, inject some code into the kernel in order to uh, activate the kernel. So uh, this other value is been been fixed right inside the kernel and uh, there's no way we can uh, emulate it. So uh, we decided to, to extract all this uh uh code from the kernel and then uh, to execute it. Uh of course uh, ARM64 to enable uh VFP virtual floating point. So that's an additional steps uh we need to do. And uh one good thing is uh Unicorn engine already have uh, all this uh, data already. So we have uh <clears throat> then uh, we need to figure out uh, how to identify when we go into situation whereby it's a time or arm mode. Okay. And then uh, make sure the loader is 
compatible for ARM, for ARM64, for, for x86, for MIPS, for all the uh, architectures that we wanted to support for, uh, for Linux at least. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, ARM, uh, like what I mentioned just now, the MCR, uh, TLS, the ARM kernel initialization, the, 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 and then the, uh, virtual floating point. Then we move on to, uh, to our MIPS, uh, series. So, uh, what do we have over here? It's, uh, we, I, I still remember this, but okay, this, this one does bring me enough memories. We stuck in this stage for almost uh, two weeks. We try to debug our code and we look at our code. And uh, until the end of the day, we discovered that there is something that, uh, it didn't being enabled inside Unicorn engine. So we look through the, uh, the QEMU code and then we extract out the data we want. And uh, it ended up we need to submit a pull request to a uh, Unicorn engine to enable this uh, CP0 C3, uh, features. All right. This uh, CPU0 C3 features to enable the, uh, then we will have the separate area ready for, uh, MIPS32, uh, Okay, it's still ELO here, and now we support uh, EB also. So we support Little Endian, we support a uh, Big Endian. Okay, so uh, I I'll, I'll go through the uh, demo setup a little bit, and then uh, 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 Simon will come in to uh, to uh, to uh, do uh, some demos for for how he uh, actually defeated the malware checking and a uh, malware itself. Okay, so. Uh, to use a uh, uh, chilling, it's uh, very simple. What you need to do, it's uh, you can use a Python script or like what I showed you earlier on. You can use a tool called QL tools to run a exe file, to run a, a, a to run a, a ELF file, or to run a MacO file by using QL tools or using uh, this method. So import the killing library, <clears throat> and then uh, to run with your with your file name your root fs so your root fs is technically your jail environment so what do you have inside root fs is all the uh your slash bean slash atc slash uh, lip slash uh, lip 64 and so on and so forth okay and then uh do you want to turn out uh debug type or not okay so that is your your <clears throat> your script the, the basic version and uh, the slightly improved version, okay, the slightly improved uh, a capability that you can build with uh, Chilling is, uh, if you want to disassemble, of course, we have these uh, disassemble features inside uh, Chilling. You don't have to do this, but, uh, you know, for the sake of uh, discussion or the sake of uh, sharing with you, uh, you can run the uh, uh, ELF file inside your, together with a uh, root FS uh, settings, and then uh, you can see ql.hook. The last second line from the black screen, QL dot hook code, and then uh, we can actually call a function. So the function is the place that uh, started to dump the op code and then uh, to print out whatever data or whatever assembly code that you want. So this is part of the uh, instrumentation or, 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 or redirecting the execution to do whatever you want to, to display more uh, uh, data. <clears throat> uh, we also are uh, able to do a uh, uh, firmware analysis, so uh, we can emulate platform. All right, we can emulate platform, uh, and uh, we can emulate. Uh, so let's say a uh, uh, MIPS uh, firmware. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so on the black screen, okay, on the black screen on the left, that is uh, the execution for for different syscall. What does it read? What does it run? Uh, what kind of syscall does it uh, call? And then on the right screen, you can see the browser is actually displaying the entire uh, router itself. So it's a Netgear R6220 series, one of the router that we test and uh, mess a lot with because uh, they, it have a couple of uh, nice features that uh, we can test, especially, you know, XECV is multi-threaded and uh, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> with a uh, 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 firmware emulation, what it's, uh, what is, uh, not easy from here is, uh, firmware emulation, especially for cams or for, 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 for routers. There is a lot of, uh, uh devices that, uh, you want to look at. So you might 
need to look at uh, there are certain parts they require NVRAM. So how we can emulate NVRAM or how we can emulate uh, certain uh, uh, devices. So since we control the CPU and since we control the uh, uh, the CPU, we control the uh, OS, we can actually fit in the information to the firmware during emulations to fulfill the request. And then uh, this is how we can bring up the entire uh, firmware. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not too sure whether Dominic is uh, it's, uh, looking or not. He uh, pushed in an a, a example how to uh, make chilling as a fuzzer, uh, a cross architecture, cross platform fuzzer. Okay, for then uh, you can actually fast uh, uh, Windows P inside Linux or fast any uh, IoT uh, uh, from Mac inside Linux. So the fuzzer, everything is, uh, is actually quite ready and is quite usable. Uh, uh, Simon actually, uh, provide this, uh, this, uh, very cool features. So we can do a malware analysis. All right. And then, uh, we do have, uh, OS profiling, uh, features. So you, uh, what you can see over here is, uh, you can set your PC name. You can set your, your Windows version numbers, your language version numbers, your, your serial number, your path, your, e even your, your IP. That is, uh, uh, one of the uh, pull requests we received uh, this morning. So from uh, from uh, Jeremy Humble, uh, and then uh, Simon actually wrote a very nice uh, randomized uh, configuration. So every time we uh, execute a malware, you can have a randomized version uh, wrapper to change the username, to change the IP address, to change whatever configuration that you need to fulfill the malware's uh, requirement. So the malware will not know it's actually running on one PC or multiple PCs or you know different kind of uh, environment. All right. Of course, uh, you can attach a GDB or 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 uh, uh or whatever debugger you want. Okay, so uh, the debugging part, all right. So you can uh, run Chilink in Linux and debug with your favorite IDA Pro, uh, to or you can even use Chilink to run an EXE file and to debug with a GDB. That is up to you on your on your on on your preference on uh what to choose and what to run and how to run it or what to debug and how to debug. All right. So uh, I, I will not talk about a lot of on uh, on uh, on a uh, grand cap. So I'll leave it to uh, Simon to do it. And uh, the ultimate sandbox tester. So I'll leave it to him. All right. So let's pass it over. Okay. Back to you. Okay. My screen should be visible. Okay. So, first of all, who am I? My name is Simona Berni. I'm a master student of Unibo, University of Bologna in Italy, and I'm doing my master thesis in binary emulation and evasion techniques with Sertigo. So we decided that Killing was a good starting point. So for this reason, I decided to join the Killing community on March, and I tried to improve how Killing behave against the real world samples. For this demo, I decided to bring Alcazar and Gangrab, are, uh, the first one, Alcazar, is a proof of concept malware that we used uh, to see if the sandbox is configured good enough to not be detected by the sample. And Gangrab is just a simple ransomware. So let's start with Alcazar. I just want to show you how killing behave against a real world checker that checks if uh, we have every single value set in the correct way, if it's not uh, configured which is the problem. And so we first rule, we can't emulate everything. I will show you that we still have to pass something because we still have some problem, but we have some bads, we have some problems, but again, I think I started working on Alcazar two weeks ago, if I remember correctly. So there is still a lot of, of to, to do, but this is a good starting point. Just for your knowledge, I just had to patch some values because I just decided to note them. And since we have a problem to the print of the results, I decided to just hook his address and uh, check myself if the value is good or bad, exactly how Alcazar would have done. But most important is Gangrab. Gangrab is a famous ransomware and uh, it's quite uh, easy to understand what he wants to do. So it was my first 
real world examples that I try to emulate with uh, uh, killing. And at the start, I had some problems, but after a bit, after implementing every single uh, uh, API calls, I I could do some uh, emulation and have some results. So some results. Since we can't again emulate everything, and uh, since I decided to stop at some point, uh, I just have to put new cutters at the end where we want to stop the emulation. This looks I will talk in a bit. It's just for uh, an explanation. And what I want to talk about in GunGrab is the profile. I will talk during the setup. So at the start, we have our configuration, our profile, and uh, how it's uh, configured to launch the malware. So for example, we have this computer name, we have the permission, we are launching as a root, we have the parent feed, because for example, even Alcazar was checking if uh, the parent process is Explorer XA or not. We have the path, we have the registry, where we can select uh, the, where the difference between the registry at the start and at the end of the execution. And we have some information about our uh, hardware, I don't want to give this demo an uh, explanation of what Grab does. Internet is just gives enough information, but just some points. For example, at the start, we can see that it's trying to check every single process in our machine. And by doing that, it's comparing the value with some value in, the, in this memory. But since, again, we can't emulate every single process, we are retrieving just a null string. So it's not passing every single check. If the check was uh, correct, Gangra would try to uh, terminate this process. And we can see how to use killing for the check this, uh, this behavior. More than that uh, is checking the Windows version. Again, we have configured Windows 10 as a standard. And uh, since the, uh, the check is OK for Gangram, we continue its execution. Then it's checking the information about this permission. We are, we are launching GangGrab as administrator, so it can continue its execution and we'll try to encrypt everything. If it was as a user, again, we can see this behavior thanks to killing. Then it's trying to check some keyboard layout. GangGrab is uh, famous to be scared about the Russian keyboards and exactly this uh, line we can see that it's trying to compare my keyboard that I have uh, configured uh, with the Russian one. Again, we can check. We can see how this behavior works. More than that, uh, we can start to see the first run against Handlab and uh, a memes with some insults on it. But more than is important to see that uh, how we can retrieve this information thanks to WSPrintFW. Since we are, had to implement every single API call, we had to create them we have given this output. And from what I know, don't take my word as a, a rule, please. Uh, SWSPrintf or printf in general can be used to move memory from one place to another, can be used to create a shellcode, can be created to, can be used to create more functions. So we can retrieve this information and I think can be quite useful to a malware analyst more strings. He's trying to retrieve some information about the lock. Again, more information about our uh, registry. And at the end, we can see that he's trying to compare again with some antivirus to see if they are running on our machine or not. Again, we are not running any antivirus because we are emulating it. And at the end, we can see that it's trying to retrieve information about our volume and our disk drive. And storing every information that he knows in a structure. Since, again, we are capturing even the string length compare, we can retrieve this information. This is our PC user, this is our PC name, and this is my keyboard. So what we can do? First of all, let's see how can grab behave if, uh, for example, we have some process. We can do, just do a simple look. We'll, we'll change that we have uh, always the open process retrieve a valid handle. And the same compare, if checked with a SQL agent, we return a valid value. So we can launch it. 
books are uh, are loaded after the setup part. So after the DLL, we can start to hook every single address, every single value, every single syscall that we want. And we are working on a way to not have to load every single time the start of killing if you want to launch the same binary with a different configuration. But here, we can see that it's comparing, the value is true. So it tried to open the process, it's returning our invalid handle, our false handle, and it's trying to terminate it, kill it. So let me set it again. That's invalid. Now, let's change profile. What we can do with another profile? For example, what happens if you are running this uh, binary with, uh, I don't know, user, for example, Windows user. The difference with the profile of uh, the standard profile, I would say, is just the single line. Permission now is run as a user and malware, or by the way, binary in general, are, uh, its behavior is different if they are run as a user or a root. And we can retrieve this information even with killing. If you're run as a user, the get token information we retrieve uh, since it's brought in the memory, another value. And uh, the behavior is different than we, what we saw before. So it's trying to retrieve the short part name of itself, Gangrab. It's trying to retrieve the information where, where it is WMC, and it's trying to launch itself as a shell command with this parameter and the file WMC. So again, we can't emulate everything, we know that, but we can't emulate, so the shell execute, we can't emulate another execution of Gangrab, but at least we know that what is doing, what is trying to do is a lot of information for a malware analyst, even if he can't retrieve the second execution, because it's, we know that it's executed a shell command as a run as, so as administrator, and it's created in the window. More than that, what, we can change even registry just using the profiles. So if we use, for example, this profile that is run as administrator and as registry, we have, if the sample ask for this key, we'll return that value as default value. If we don't, we can not put any single registry and we'll just use the value, the default value of the registry passed as an argument, but we can overwrite them in this way. So again, we can see that it's trying to check the keyboard layout. This time, the value is the Russian one and Gangrab doesn't like it. Doesn't like it at all because it will kill himself. That's because from what I read online, I'm sorry, but I'm not an expert on this field and I'm still learning. But Rush, he doesn't want to execute in any kind of uh, Russian environment. So if he checks that a uh, Russian language or uh, an Eastern European languages or a Russian keyboard, he will just kill himself and stop the execution. That's it. It's not complicated at all to use it. And just for your knowledge, how is configured a uh, profile? It's a uh, simple. We use config parser. If you know that uh, library to check what is inserted. And uh, it's simple as that. It's not everything is, in this way, it's possible for a uh, malware analyst, just give many configure of uh, your entire system, many profiles and change the behavior of the malware and, and analyze the malware in different behavior, in different, uh, how I can say, environment. If you have, I don't know, a Windows 10 machine, but at the same time you have a Mac OS, you want to check the both the environment we are working on my quest uh, profile and that's it pretty much i can give back the the word to to kai if he, i think he has more examples so i can stop the presentation oh too <coughs> too too bad we don't have time i have tons of uh i do have tons of uh demo 
uh, you get to choose. You have about uh, three minutes. Um, there were no questions there, so if you have a short demo, I would say throw it in. No, we we don't have a short one. We still have a few more slides. Okay, so let's cover a few more slides. All right. Uh, yes, I copy Apple again. Uh, one more thing. It's uh, this is this should be a a, a conclusion slides, but I don't make it a conclusion slides. You know. I turn into a star bagging slide. So uh, we are feeding on star, ladies and gentlemen. Again, uh, please uh, like our project, give us a star, uh, uh, commit to the project, uh, send us more pull requests. Okay. Uh, right before the talk, five minutes uh, right before the talk, we tag 1.0. Uh, so officially, this is the day that uh, we... We ended our beta, our RC, and we goes into a proper 1.0 version. And I did discover, discover a bug after we tag, so screw it. We're going to do a 1.0.1 uh, later next week. All right. So uh, uh, we do hope to see a more exciting uh, uh, binary analysis tools on top of our chilling. Uh later okay after you know you guys look at our project uh and we are we are proud we are still very proud to say that uh until now we know that for sure i mean in the situation that uh we actually know no uh we know that there are couple of uh uh thesis is either on their bachelor degree on their master degree it's actually the, the entire thesis is built on top of uh chilling we we are very Happy to hear that. So, uh, if any, if anyone really, uh, if anyone really, uh, 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 using or, or writing a thesis or, you know, helping you in your day to day life, uh, on mail analysis, on IoT analysis, please do let us know. Uh, Queen sent me a message to, uh, to, uh, to show you, to, to ask me to, uh, to show you guys the address. I guess uh, you can see it over there is, uh, chilling.io. Click on download. Then you go to our GitHub page and click on the star. All right. So the very last message that I would like to share, it's uh, uh, ever since uh, 2015, okay, the lazy queen, he released a uh, unicorn uh, 1.0, 1, 1 1.0. And then uh, until now, I think uh, he tried to move to 1.02 and there's no news. And after quite a bit of uh, collaborative uh, pressure okay we uh, uh forced him to go to unicorn 2 so finally he decided to go for unicorn 2 and then uh we are still looking for for sponsors you know uh open source project it's a very money burning project so we hope uh we were able to get sponsors or any help that i can actually help on uh unicorn 2 okay so he sent me a message again he said damn it you asshole okay uh basically that's it uh, that's our talk tonight, and uh, I hope you like it. Okay, awesome. Um, so thank hey, you, did, Kay. Did I, I, did I share my screen just now? No. No, no you did not. Oh shit! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm an idiot. I am an idiot, but there's only two screens. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Let me show it now. No wonder he says I never share my screen. Do I have like half a minute? Yeah, half a minute. Okay, so yes, yes, yes. Can you can see a killing.io or just go to GitHub, uh, killing framework slash killing. Then, uh, you can see the very big red star earth arrow and then, uh, like star or project or else I will not leave this live stream until I see a thousand star. No, uh, I'm just joking. Okay. So, uh, questions? Uh, we don't have time for what? those. So, uh, but I'm still right. going to thank okay. you, Kalerikayen, for your talk. And Simone, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, people, um, be sure to start their project.